Hey guys, it's Tony Tom Logan back with another video for you. And today we are going to be taking a look at the RTX 4070. Now there's obviously been a lot of naming dramas and stuff that has happened over the last few months, but depending on how or what you think of everything that's gone on, we now have the 4070 after the 4070 Ti, which is a little confusing. Anyway, it does come in as like a little baby card, but with a, not a baby price, but definitely a better price than some of us were expecting. There were rumors a while ago about it being 699, and to be fair, if they had have put it up that price, then I don't think any of us would have thought twice about it. Moaned, yes, but it would have just been a, well, yeah. But it's come in at $599 and $589. GBP for the founders. That is the MSRP. Now this Gigabyte Windforce model that I have is an overclock model, but amazingly it does still come in at 589. It is the MSRP card. Now what that does mean, again, quite strangely, that the reference version, which is like the vanilla version, would have lower clocks than the founders. And the Windforce overclock model matches the clocks of the founders on paper at least and that is why it comes in at msrp and it means it's got similar kinds of performance because there were ways in the past that the the reference models could have actually ended up slower than the founders and it just got all a bit unbalanced and unweighted and people were kicking off about it mainly vendors were kicking off about it but like i said we have this lovely overclock model from gigabyte now uh the Founders Edition is actually quite small in that it's 245-ish millimetres long. You still get the twin fans that you've been used to, but it does feel quite itty-bitty, quite dainty compared to some of the other 4000 series models that we have had. It does still come with the 12 plus 4 pin PWR VH, those annoying cables. Um, but don't forget, you can now get the cable mod adapters. There are many different ones. I've made videos. I can link to the video. It will pop up. Uh, but you can get the cable mod adapters now. But having the 90mm cable mod adapter would be plain and simply about being tidy on this or if you're very, very short of space because it's only the length of a normal expansion slot in the back. It hasn't got the extra width, the extra girth. It's not as long. It is a little bubby of a card. Now the Gigabyte is that little bit longer at, this one is 265 millimetres, but the most astounding thing with the Gigabyte, and I was literally opening the box saying to myself, well, it's a shame we don't see anyone be brave and use a PCI Express connector. And then lo and behold, this one has a single eight pin PCIe connector. So this could be good for those of you out there that are looking to upgrade, but don't want to be using quite frankly, the ugly uh, adapter cable that comes with the founders, all the other cards. Even I don't like them. They're far too short. The cable braiding on them isn't very nice. They're just ugly. And by the time you've then gone and spent, possibly, uh, bought a nice cable from Cable Mod to go into your power supply, it adds on to all the prices. So the money that you save on a two, uh, sorry, a 589 card, wow, imagine if it was 289, they couldn't make them fast enough, could they? Uh, the money that you save on a 589 card rather than a 650 card, for example, you then spent a good whack going towards it just buying the extra bits. So for those of you out there looking for a fit and forget graphics card upgrade, the Gigabyte actually so far is the one that genuinely stands out amongst the crowd because you don't have to go and do that uh, stuff. And also, as I cannot stress this enough, yes, this would come with an adapter cable so you can plug eight pin PCI Express pin, eight pin PCI Express connectors in, but it just doesn't look very nice. And it does look cheap. It completely devalues the look of a system. I personally despise it and have since I first saw it. So the fact that you can use this with your existing kit if you haven't got one of the 12 plus four pin connector cables yet, with, you know, with your power supply or an upgrade cable or something like that, is genuinely really nice. Now, the Gigabyte does have a uh, metal backplate, the rest of it's plastic. Now, 
I say the rest of it's plastic because that does mean if you really wanted to, you could get arty farty with it and chuck some paint at it without too much of a problem. Um, so you could make it look a little bit nicer. There's no RGBs, there's no frills. It's not a tank card. This in comparison is completely over-engineered like all of the other um, uh, RTX card. It's a beautiful design. Um, and, and the fact that it's getting smaller is actually making it cuter. Like, I genuinely love it. The only real thing to note is that the GeForce thing doesn't light up now. Um, I've always wanted to have a go at polishing one of these. And I mean like mirror polishing, but oh my days, can you imagine how long it would take? But I'd still love to do it. I think NVIDIA might say to me to get on with it at some point. Anyway, temps for both of them were very good. Power draw, it's, it's all right as well. It's not like it's going to pull an awful lot because we do need to remember this is a, you know, it is below the 4070 Ti. But the 4070, really what it brings to the table is... 3080 like performance, but now with DLSS 3 as well. So you do get the new, um, obviously you get DLSS, but for games that support it, you get frame gen as well. And it does make a fairly decent amount of difference. Just the playability difference with the new Witcher, which they've obviously added on all the DLSS stuff to, it, this pretty much needed that extra lift from DLSS 3 and frame generation to make it able to be playable, especially when you've got ray tracing and everything like that on, where well, you can't turn it off, but you get what I mean. It's just, you need that extra lift that comes with it. Control, th there's loads of games you can pick apart the graphs. Please remember you can go to the OC3D website and uh, look at more graphs and many more games. Uh, but effectively, you have got high 1440p frame rates uh, with pretty much everything. It is, I think, probably so far, the most attractive card in the stack. Had the 4070 Ti, which actually sold really well. The 4080, kind of, you had that weird pricing, kind of, you know, weirdness going on about the fact that there was gonna be two 4080 naming scheme and the 4080 didn't do that well. And obviously the 4090, they come in and they go out. I think this is going to do quite well because the pricing is a less of a sting than it has been with a lot of the other cards. But it really does deliver for those of you that aren't looking for 100 frames per second plus at 4K and you know wanting to run everything to the hilt, this at 1440p, which I would still say to this day is the balance of details plus the performance needed to drive it. Once you go up to that 4K screen, you need so much more extra graphics horsepower to be able to drive it that you end up spending so much more money. Whereas this is the sort of thing that would be an amazing upgrade for so, so many of you at home. Those of you out there that are still rocking a 1080 Ti or maybe even going down to like the 2080s, that sort of thing, 2080 Ti's, this is going to be an epic upgrade. Because it's got DLSS, and when it first came out, we did say if they got behind this and the developers got behind this, it would do really well. And now it does make such a difference. And I know there are gonna be people out there that hate it, um, but that's completely down to them. I don't want to have an argument with you. You're the people that you're never going to be able to, uh, you know, reason with. So if you are out there, and you're looking for a decent upgrade and you've got about 600 quid to spend, then one of these is actually going to be a really decent place to spend your money. Uh, as the graphs say, it's performed really well. You can make your own mind up. But out of the two, this one feels like it's more quality. But this one, because of that eight pin, could be perfect for those of you out there that have already got a system and are just buying a graphics card and you just need a graphics card upgrade and you don't want to mess around with all the cable mumbo jumbo, that one would be the one that I would grab. So there you go. I am done. That is my review of the RTX 4070s. Don't forget to tune back in tomorrow and I'll have an overclock version for you. Uh, because the NDAs were separate. So, there you go. Tiny Tom Logan, out. Ding!
Love you, sis.